Well, back to our breaking news uh, coming out of Turkey and that uh, military operations have begun in northern Syria. Uh, let's go straight to Sinan Kasudo, our correspondent in Istanbul. Uh, Reuters news agency were talking about uh, reports of uh, artillery fire and aerial assault in that uh, northeastern region. What are you hearing, Sinan? So uh, Turkish President Recep Tayyip Erdogan just announced a few minutes ago from his Twitter account that the operation has started. Uh, and what we know is that uh, Turkish, Turkish F-16 jets took off from Diyarbakir, Turkey's southern city, and they hit Rasul, uh, the YPG positions, uh, uh, Syrian Kurdish fighter groups uh, positions in Rasul Ayn uh, in Syria. Also, uh, the F-16 jets are supported by the artillery and, uh, and uh, we have been uh, in the pictures, we see the smokes coming out. Uh, so literally, technically, the operation has begun yesterday. Turkish President Erdogan said that the operation is to begin shortly, but no one uh, would guess that it would take less than 20 hours to launch this operation. And of course, the president uh, tried to reassure, as his spokespeople uh, have over the past few days, uh, that great care would be taken to make sure that there were as few civilian casualties as possible. So just confirm for us, who is Turkey actually targeting? So, since the beginning, Turkey's rhetoric was this. We target uh, the uh, YPG, uh, which is the Syrian branch of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party. This is what the Turkish authorities have said since the beginning of the, uh, of, of the crisis in Syria. And Turkey has listed uh, the, uh, the PKK as a terrorist organization, as the EU and the US has, uh, has done as well. So they say we don't have any problem with the locals there, we don't have any problem with the Kurds living there, but we will not let a, uh, what they call a terror corridor to be established right b uh, beside our border, uh, uh, we, uh, which is like uh, more than 400 kilometers uh, from the eastern side of the Eu Euphrates River to the Iraqi border. Turkey says we will not let let any entity to be run by the YPG, which Turkey sees as a terrorist organization. The operation targets the YPG. It, it wants to clear the YPG from the mm. region and establish a safe zone of 30 kilometers. And Turkey plans to move back at least one or two million Syrian refugees who now live in Turkey back to this area. And of course, that's the long term plan. We're also getting news out of Russia at the moment, Sinem, as well, that a senior lawmaker there uh, through Interfax, uh, the news agency, is saying that the Turkish offensive in Syria can be construed as a violation of Syria's sovereignty. Is there a concern in Ankara where the decisions are made that this incursion would have embroiled other uh, parties that are interested in the way uh, that they control or do not control that part of northern Syria? So, hell, actually, uh, Turkey's position in Syria, in northern Syria, either northeast or northwest, has been very complicated since the beginning. Uh, for instance, like uh, an hour or more ago, Turkish president held a phone conversation with Russian President uh, uh, Putin, and uh, according to the Turkish uh, presidency statement, uh, the both leaders stated that this operation can be constructive and it would open uh, the way, uh, uh, pave the way for a democratic solution in Syria. But of course, the, the, the alignments always change on the ground, especially when it comes to Syria, even within uh, opposition or uh, the opposite groups. Uh, for, the, uh, for the PYD and YPG, we, uh, we know that Russia doesn't recognize uh, them as a terrorist organization, and they have had talks as well. So for PYD or YPG, it is practical to align with Russia or approach to regime when they have a negative response from the Americans. So this is also a question mark for Turkey as well. And how Russia will react towards this military operation has not been very clear so far. So uh, uh, will uh, and uh, from the uh, Iranian side, we have been hearing that this operation might be a step to violate uh, Syria's uh, sovereignty. But Turkey has been emphasizing that Turkey aims only territorial integrity in Syria, which is also uh, its border security and its own territorial integrity. Mm. But uh, this military operation uh, will, might take long. It can take longer than expected because the area that Turkish military targets right now, 
30 kilometers deep, more than four, uh, 400 kilometers wide to the Iraqi border is almost seven or eight times larger than the former, uh, the previous military operations conducted in the Euphrates Shield area, which covers Al Bab, Jarablus, Azaz, uh, and uh, and Afrin Operation Olive Branch. So it is a more complicated military situation for the Turkish military as well. Uh, which will be backed by the Free Syrian Army, who merged under a national army okay. uh, by the interim uh, Syrian opposition government. Indeed. Uh, don't, don't go too far away, Sinan. We'll be coming back to you straight away because uh, we'll cross over to Kimberly Halkett, our White House correspondent uh, in uh, DC. And of course, uh, Kimberly, we were just speaking earlier about, about this whole situation. Right. It's a very complicated political and military jigsaw puzzle that we see in Syria politicians and certainly the Oval Office will be watching very carefully about where Turkey targets its uh, military munitions and its personnel. Yeah, and it will also be officials in the Pentagon that will also be watching very carefully. And there will be deep disappointment uh, with the developments that we are reporting on, given the fact that the Pentagon has been uh, trying for some time to talk Turkey out of invading northeast Syria. In fact, in a Pentagon statement that we had on Monday, it says that uh, the Pentagon does not endorse a Turkish military operation into Syria. We will not support it. So. Uh, obviously, the advice of the United States has not been heeded. In fact, it has been completely disregarded, uh, something that we got an indication of as early as Sunday when the White House first put out that statement saying that the U.S. troops would pull back to make way for a Turkish operation. It appears the coordination of Turkey's leader Erdogan, as well as President Trump in the United States, uh, that these two seem to have been orchestrating this uh, unilateral Laterally or bilaterally uh, in the absence of the advice, at least, of the U.S. Pentagon. Now, the Pentagon also saying in that statement that it released that there's the belief that this is going to create risk for Turkey. And there's also the potential for destabilizing consequences. And getting back to your initial question about politicians, you're right, there are not very many happy politicians with regard to this. Uh, this is a very divided country politically, has been for some time. But what we're seeing on this issue in the U.S. Congress is Democrats and Republicans agreeing. And that is rare. Uh, the statement coming from one top Democrat, Bob Menendez, in the on the Foreign Relations Committee in the U.S. Senate, he says that this uh, decision of the United States that has now led to these developments with Turkey moving forward with military operations, that this is upending a longstanding policy with an impulsive, politically driven decision that will sacrifice long-term U.S. national security interests. So uh, the Pentagon not happy, I'm sure, about this, and we are reaching out to see what information we can get there. But given the past statements from top uh, uh, you know, defense officials, politicians who are involved with the oversight on that, uh, certainly there's going to be deep concern with the actions of Turkey as it's moving forward. And did Kimberly, sort of this plays into much more the long-term vision and influence that the United States has in the region and generally uh, across the world, uh, because when you have the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, someone like Nikki Haley and Lindsey Graham, a prominent Republican who have been Trump supporters, both saying that you cannot leave your allies, your supporters, in the lurch like they have left the Kurdish fighters when they've been fighting a, a joint enemy in terms of ISIL. There's deep disappointment and deep concern within the Republican Party. And they, are, I say, as two individuals of many, will be focused on what is being targeted in northern Syria in the coming minutes and hours. Yeah, the U.S. president really tried to underscore on Tuesday the relationship between the United States and Turkey, that this is an important NATO ally, that there is an important partnership when it comes to the F-35 fighter jet, that there is collaboration in the construction of that. And it's important to support uh, Turkey as a partner. But you brought up the former U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, Nikki Haley. Nikki Haley, very clear in one of her tweets, registering her displeasure with the U.S. president's announcement of uh, troops pulling back out of northeast Syria, that uh, she, she finished her 
her tweet with the hashtag Turkey is not our friend, a direct contradiction to what the U.S. president has been saying. And certainly as we pull back from this even further, uh, it is a confusing message coming out of the White House because on the one hand, uh, the United States is saying, look at Turkey is our friend. Uh, U.S. President Donald Trump has invited uh, Recep Tayyip Erdogan to the White House on November 13th, that's next month, for a visit underscoring this relationship. But there's a deep distrust of Turkey by many U.S. politicians in the U.S. Congress. And certainly, uh, you brought up uh, Senator Lindsey Graham, a Republican, a member of the president's own Republican Party, who usually is a very vocal supporter of Donald Trump. But on this issue, not the case. He has been very much opposed to this, calling this a disaster. Uh, there have been suggestions that this is morally wrong because, of course, don't forget, in the midst of all of this, the Kurdish fighters that helped the United States in the defeat of ISIL, working alongside the United States for almost five years, uh, even holding out hopes that with that would come the promise of, of some sort of autonomous control, government, region, nation. Uh, all of that has been abandoned. And uh, a number of, uh, of lawmakers, including Senator Marco Rubio, a Republican, have said this is going to leave a moral stain on the United States, that the, the reputation with U.S. allies will be harmed, not just in the eyes, potentially, of, of the European community that has registered deep concern about this, but, but others expanding even wider, that the United States has moved ahead impulsively for political reasons, perhaps uh, motivated most, in the words of Donald Trump, in his effort to win re-election in 2020. He said very clearly from the White House on Monday that he made a campaign promise in 2016 to get uh, the United States out of endless foreign wars. And it appears that not just uh, the underscoring of the relationship with Turkey, but also keeping that campaign promise is at the forefront of Donald Trump's mind as he made this decision on Sunday that has now led to these breaking news developments of Turkey moving forward with military operations. Uh, you keep a very close eye on what goes on in the White House, Kimberly, and you have your contacts there. Do you generally get any sense at all that this is a type of issue that the president would roll back on? He has rolled back indirectly on other issues, but with one that is so... Uh, decisive, important uh, to the, the strategy of how uh, the Middle East is kept safe. Do you think this is one that he might really have to reconsider? Is he that type of person? He's definitely that type of person. The, the only thing consist about, consistent about Donald Trump is his inconsistency. Uh, so, yeah, Donald Trump can change his mind with the flip of a coin. But having said that, we have already seen him twice pull back, provide an extension for troops in Syria uh, after there has been registered displeasure by the U.S. Congress, namely the U.S. Senate. Most recently, we saw this in January, the president made a very sort of surprise announcement as he met with Baltic leaders, the, the U.S. Senate voting its displeasure, and then suddenly there is a bit of an extension. Many in the U.S. Congress hoping that'll happen a third time. There is already an effort. President supporter Lindsey Graham, a member of his own public Republican Party, saying we're going to move ahead with legislation to say that this is a bad idea. The problem with that, uh, there are two problems with that. Number one, any effort in it legislatively in the Senate is non-binding. So the White House can continue to do what it wants. Number two, we're getting closer and closer and closer to that November 2020 election. And the United States, uh, th that is just going to pick up with intensity. And you can see from the president's tweets that he put out in just the last couple of hours that that seems to be on his mind. He's making the case to the American voter. When he wrote on Twitter, the United States has spent $8 trillion fighting and policing in the Middle East. Thousands of our great soldiers have died or have been badly wounded. Millions of people have died on the other side. Going into the Middle East is the worst decision ever made. And then he goes on into the history of our country. 
Donald Trump is speaking directly to a domestic audience there. He is playing to the U.S. voter that has for many, many years now felt enormous war fatigue. The, the, the American public feels it has been lied to with the 2003 invasion of Iraq over faulty intelligence, that search for weapons of mass destruction, which were never found. Uh, and this is something that plays into the minds of American voters. American voters know that the United States has technically been at war in some form or fashion for a generation. And that's what Donald Trump is playing to and what is prominent on his mind right now. Well, we know that you're not going too far, Kimberly. We'll continue to uh, get reaction from you as the day progresses. Uh, for those of you that have just joined us, you're watching Al Jazeera English Live from Doha. And a reminder of our breaking news story this hour that the Turkish president Recep Tayyip Erdogan has announced that the offensive into northeastern Syria has begun. A short time, he tweeted, the Turkish armed forces together with the Syrian National Army just launched hashtag Operation Peace Spring against the PKK and the YPG and Daesh terrorists in northern Syria. Daesh being, of course, uh, ISIL. Our mission is to prevent the creation of a terror corridor across our southern border and to bring peace to the area. Operation Peace Spring will neutralize terror threats against Turkey and lead to the establishment of a safe zone, facilitating the return of Syrian refugees to their homes. We will preserve Syria's territorial integrity and liberate local communities from terrorists. Let's cross over back to Istanbul and to Sinim Kasulu. Sinim, for our audience that are just joining us, uh, let's just focus on who these terrorists are as defined by the Turks. And uh, as far as you're concerned, where do we know exactly where this operation uh, is beginning? Uh, Sohail, what Turkey calls as a terrorist group uh, are firstly a YPG, the Syrian uh, Kurdish fighter group, which Turkey believes is the Syria branch of the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, PKK. And PKK is listed as a terrorist organization by Turkey, the EU and the United States. Tur uh, also, what Turkey calls as a terrorist group is uh, the ISIL. Uh, Turkey is not only uh, fighting the PKK in the region, but also uh, fighting ISIL, according to Ankara. And Ankara has blamed uh, Washington for aligning with the YPG, which, uh, which is linked to a terrorist group uh, recognized by the U.S. as well. This was a Turkish uh, rhetoric since the beginning. But the Americans said that the YPG has been leading, uh, uh, leading troops uh, in the fight uh, against ISIL. And ac uh, according to what we are hearing from uh, the officials uh, and the uh, sources on the ground, there are explosion sounds in Res Syria's Resul Ain right across uh, the southeastern city, Shanurfa. Uh, F-16 jets have taken off from a uh, southeastern city, Diyarbakir, and have started bombing uh, the YPG positions in Resul Ain. Also, artillery supporting the F-16 uh, strikes currently. This is what we know so far. In terms of the pictures that uh, Turkish television was broadcasting just a short time ago, we saw areas, as you say, of uh, Diyarbakir and also Tel Abad. Uh, we've also been at uh, Achakale, uh, where our correspondent has also been focusing uh, his attention on the military build-up. In terms of the way that the Turkish people have been informed, uh, are they all on side with this military operation? What's the general feeling there? Sohail, when it comes to a fight against the outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, uh, all segments of the Turkish society meet on the same ground because uh, Turkey, uh, as the state, uh, Turkey has fought against the PKK for uh, almost four decades, more than three decades, and it cost uh, around 40,000 lives, both from the uh, Turkish military side and the uh, Kurdish citizens who have joined the PKK so far. So this is a long story for Turkey. Economically, Turkey has been very hurt by the fight against the PKK during those last decades. Uh, that's why uh, it is seen as legitimate by the Turkish public. Of course, uh, the the, mo uh, the motive of the military while the motive of the military operation is appreciated uh, by almost everyone, including the opposition, the way how the military operation 
investigation uh, is going to be conducted, was going to be conducted, uh, was uh, questioned by the opposition or the supporters of the government because uh, there were some parties, even inside military, who were against the military operations so deep, uh, like 30 kilometers or more inside northeastern Syria. So, uh, motive-wise, yes, it is, uh, it is accepted and perceived well uh, by almost every segment of the society. It's but of course, how the military uh, operation will unfold, especially thinking that the US uh, has taken out its support from both sides, neither from Turkey nor the uh, Syrian Democratic Forces side, mm -hmm. uh, it's, a, it's a little bit question mark. Indeed, I mean, it's Sinim. Will that support remain there for Erdogan if he has and his government have said that they will make sure that the civilian population are protected whilst this military operation happens in north uh, eastern Syria. Because once you have pictures of civilians being injured in military clashes, whatever they may be, that can turn the tide. I mean, is there a threshold to which even the Turkish public would criticise the government if they started to see the injured being ferried back onto Turkish soil, where they are already hosting several uh, million uh, Syrian refugees already? Exactly, Sohail. I mean, when it comes to the humanit uh, humanitarian catastrophe, it is, uh, uh, th there is no excuse for this, uh, of course. And uh, the, uh, the PKK, Outlawed Kurdistan Workers' Party, uh, in general, and the YPG ha have used uh, uh, civilians as human shields. And whenever there is an attack, uh, you can see on their web pages or uh, media outlets that they announced they are going to use civilians as the human shields. Um, so this is a concern, of course, how the military operation is going to unfold is a concern. Even though the Turkish uh, side claims and insists that they are going to avoid any civilian casualties, of course, when there are airstrikes, bombardments, uh, there are some injuries that are unavoidable. So uh, this, is, this is the very important uh, issue for the Turkish military. I have spoken to Turkish military members since this uh, operation news uh, uh, broke and uh, Turkey had some military operations uh, elsewhere as well. Turkey has been in Somalia, joined the UN forces in Afghanistan uh, and uh, did operations uh, uh, in, in Cyprus uh, decades ago. And what they tell me is that humanitarian uh, safety is the most important thing for the Turkish military. But of course, the field, the battleground is different. Uh, everything can change. Mm. Uh, there are some individual incidents that you can uh, point out. For instance, uh, the, the YPG and the SDF uh, was reported by the international uh, rights groups as violating the civilian rights, uh, injustice behaviors in the areas they are taking, they have taken under control, and they were uh, those inter international institutions have accused them for uh, forcing people, displacing people uh, after they took control of the local administrations. However, on the other side, uh, there was a report again by an international institute that during this Afrin operation, Operation Olive Branch, the uh, the factions uh, which joined the Turkish military uh, did some violations as well in Afrin. So uh, this has this is a concern for both sides, Sohail. And uh, unless the operation begins, uh, you 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 never know what's going to happen. But one thing that I would like to say is that the geography which Turkey targets right now is almost seven, eight times bigger than uh, the, uh, the previous operation areas uh, that Turkey uh, handled, like the Operation Olive Branch area and uh, Euphrates Shield area, which include El Bab, Jarablus, Azaz and other places. And that area, the previous area, was a mountainous area. So it was easy for the Turkish military to conduct operation. But this area on the eastern side of the Euphrates River, where, uh, uh, under SDF control, uh, this, is a, this is a more kind of a flat area. That's why Turkish military experts warn that the YPG forces uh, will go into towns or settlements, which, can, uh, which is going to be more like an urban, urban uh, warfare. So uh, when it comes to urban areas, it is more important to avoid civilian casualties because mm. they are going to be involved with the civilians. Indeed.